Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. In this video, I share the results of a ballistic gel test I did for the 6.5 Grindel, shooting Nosler ballistic tip ammo with a 120 grain ballistic tip bullet. There's what the bullet looks like for you. Now, I shot this test with my Diamondback DB15 rifle in 6.5 Grindel with an 18 inch barrel, and I used my Banish Backcountry suppressor on that rifle when I shot the test. Now, since I'm planning on using this cartridge to hunt stuff like deer and hogs at short to moderate range close to where I live, I shot this ammo into gel blocks 50 yards away. Now, I already did this test, and I have since set this rifle up for hog hunting. That's why it has a thermal scope on it now. I used a regular scope on it for the gel test, in case you were curious. And, as always, I measured velocities with my Garmin chronograph. So... Let's get into the results of how things worked with this Nosler ballistic tip ammo for the 6.5 Grindel in ballistic gel. Okay, let's see how it did up close. As you can see, we got a longer neck than I like to see here. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. It's about three and a quarter inches long. But once we get some expansion, this wound cavity is pretty impressive. And not only is this a pretty wide wound cavity, but it's pretty long as well. But it does angle downwards a little bit going into that second gel block. That wound cavity continues into the second gel block a little bit. And then the bullet comes to rest here just past the 24-inch mark in the gel. So pretty good penetration combined with an impressive wound cavity. I'll pull that bullet out and get you some more specs on it. Okay, I pulled that bullet out of the gel block. Original bullet weight, 120 grains. I put this one on the scale, it weighs 96.6 grains. So it shed about 20% or almost 20% of its original mass. Original bullet diameter, 0.264 inches. This one now measures 0.575 inches. That's just over 2x bullet expansion, about 2.17x to be exact. Now, as you can see though, the bullet exhibited asymmetric expansion, and that is probably what resulted in it traveling downwards at an angle through the gel. Now, though it looks like it has lots of expansion at first glance, that is primarily due to the fact that pieces of the jacket are sticking out at kind of a weird angle from the bullet body. The actual big mushroom of the lead core is not much bigger than the bullet diameter. Let's take another look at the gel, though. This wound track does have a longer neck than I like to see. I'm not really happy with that, but the wound cavity is still impressive, especially considering the sedate velocity of this ammo. Remember, muzzle velocity is just 2,250 feet per second in this case. That translates to about 2,150 feet per second of impact velocity at 50 yards. That's not very fast. Even so, this is still a pretty good sized wound cavity. And even though the neck of the wound cavity is longer than I like to see, if you were to overlay that sort of expansion on an animal, you would see the largest portion of this wound cavity would extend through the vitals of something like a deer or a hog, especially if you shot it through the shoulder or took a quartering shot. Now, as you can see, there are some lead fragments radiating outwards from the wound track that will cause additional damage. Additionally, penetration was great. I was surprised to see it make it about 24 inches like that in the gel, especially considering how soft the Nosler ballistic tip is. Now, the bullet does shed around 20% of its original weight. This is something of a double-edged sword. On one hand, losing too much weight can negatively affect penetration. However, losing mass like this one did, with lots of lead fragments radiating outwards, also means those small lead fragments cause additional damage to the body cavity. Plus, in a situation like this where the bullet loses a lot of mass and doesn't have a traditional mushroom shape with lots of expansion, means the bullet isn't subject to as much drag. This works to increase penetration compared to, say, everything else being the same and having a bullet with a really large final expanded di diameter. So to recap, we have about 24 inches of penetration in gel, just over 2x bullet expansion, but the actual lead core of the bullet is expanded to a little bit smaller diameter than, than that. 
just over 80% weight retention, a medium to large wound cavity, uh, velocity about 150 feet per second slower than advertised though. That is probably due to me shooting a rifle with a barrel six inch shorter than what this ammo is specced at. This ammo, like almost everything else, is specced with a 24 inch barrel. I would rather have that extra 150 feet per second of velocity than not. And this is actually a situation where that additional muzzle velocity can make a noticeable difference of field, especially with this ammo having such a long neck like I observed in this test. But on the other hand, having that longer barrel just makes the rifle longer overall, especially when you are using a suppressor like I, I am. All things considered, I was still impressed with how this load performed in gel. The 6.5 Grendel, like just about every round that is designed to work in an AR-15, is built with a number of compromises to function in this rifle. It is not a physically very large or powerful cartridge, and with those things in mind, this ballistic tip bullet does a pretty good job of getting the job done. I wish it had a shorter neck in this gel test, but this in and of itself isn't a deal breaker for me. But I definitely wouldn't want to have a neck any longer than this. All in all, I think this is pretty good hunting ammo for hunting stuff like deer and hogs with a 6.5 Grendel. For reference, I have also tested the 115 grain Barnes and 123 grain SST loads for this cartridge. The ballistic tip bullet penetrated almost as far as the 115 grain Barnes TAC TX, but the ballistic tip made a much larger wound cavity than that Barnes bullet. And it made a wound cavity nearly as large as the 123 grain SST, but penetrated much better than the Hornady bullet. Plus, this Nosler ammo easily shot the best out of my rifle compared to those other two loads. Your mileage may vary, though. Even considering the longer than ideal neck I observed with this stuff in gel, I think the 120 grain ballistic tip is right in that sweet spot between the Hornady and the Barnes loads with really good penetration and expansion. One of my subscribers actually swears by this stuff, and he has an AR N65 Grendel using this Nosler ammo for his grandson that the young man has used with success on animals like deer and hogs. He said nothing has gone more than a few feet after a hit with it. We're not talking about piles and piles of animals here, but those are still good indications of how well it performs a field. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. Have you used this 120 grain Nosler ammo a field? How did it perform for you? I welcome your feedback. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Likewise, leave a comment on this video and let me know the cartridge bullet combination you would like me to use in a future gel test I publish here on YouTube. And so far I've published a bunch of other gel tests they are all on a YouTube playlist for you to peruse. I am open to suggestions from you on what else you would like to see from me in the future. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more content along those lines, visit huntingguns101.com and sign up there for a free ebook on the best hunting calibers. I also cover this stuff in even more detail in my premium Hunting Guns 101 training. Link is also in the video description. That training also contains a thorough overview of external and terminal ballistics, so you will learn how bullets actually kill animals, as well as some specific examples of rifles and scopes ideally suited to a variety of hunting situations. You'll also discover the various factors that affect bullet penetration and expansion, and you'll learn a couple different methods of choosing the ideal cartridge bullet combination for a hunt that will deliver ideal terminal performance on whatever game you are hunting. Subscribers to my premium Hunting Guns 101 training will also receive access to my extensive and growing library of ballistic gel test results, most of which are not on YouTube. That library has gel test results for multiple different popular hunting loads for cartridges like the 223 Remington, 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC, 270 Winchester, 7mm Rim Mag, 7mm PRC, 300 Blackout, 308 Winchester, 30 on 6 Springfield, and 300 Win Mag, among others. Once again, this list is always growing. I have also done ballistic gel tests with actual deer and elk shoulder blades embedded in the gel to give you an idea of how impacting bone affects the performance of different bullets as well.
and those gel test results demonstrate the wide spectrum of results you can expect from different cartridges and bullets that you can use to tailor your hunting load to the specific situation. Once again, more details on all of that are available at the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.